let, uh, let you know what we are able to do in Asturias. Now, uh, with us, there are four firms. Uh, the name of them, sorry, because who is going to start Hopover Running uh, Energy in, energy in the System. Uh, we have a stand there, and uh, we are here with the European Innovation Center of Asturias and the Asturian Promotion Agency. Uh, I don't remember at this time the, the, the number of our stand is uh, 60, just in case everybody wants to to visit us and to let something else about our firms. Please, come in. This is your turn. Um, I, you hear me? Thank you. Oh. Well, thank you very much all. Thank you, the government of, Ast of Asturias, for letting us be here. I would like to thank Fay also for organizing. Um, I want to start my presentation with a question for you. How many of you are satisfied with, uh, with your relation with your energetic company? Probably not many of you are satisfied. Why does this happen? The real problem is that energetic companies have huge amounts of uh, data coming from the data systems that they could use in providing many more services to their users and don't do so. They don't give a natural, uh, personalized service to their clients. Their clients don't understand their bills and this provokes that they use in many times the call, the cell, the, the call centers from, from the companies and that provokes loads of costs to the companies and at the same time a loyalty reduction and a churn rate increase in the companies. This is terrible for the companies in the cost wise. That's why we are here, Energy Mate. Uh, I'm Gonzalo de Silva, the CFO of Energy Mate and uh, I'm trying to deliver to you all the information related to this new project. What we are doing actually is delivering the utility companies all the information gathered from those data centers, those uh, um, information coming from the electricity uh, information and deliver that information to their clients in an easy, feasible and personalized way. How we do that? Um, the first thing we do is gather all the information. We catch the information from the smart meters and uh, involve that information with other kinds of uh, um, data coming from uh, meteorology, uh, pricing, energy pricing, or uh, population, etc. All that information, what we do is we process in, with different uh, innovative techniques of data science, uh, big data, etc., and what we deliver to the client are messages personalized for their use in an easy way of understanding. All those messages will end up in a sustainable and, and easy use uh, platforms as can be apps, webs, emails, etc. We do have uh, competitors, but none of them really give uh, personalized service as we do with the information coming with the, from the utilities. Plus, we don't need to make any, any additional investment in hardware. Our business model really is B to B to C. Our, our real client is the utilities that give service nationwide. Our what we're going to do is charge those utilities uh, a fixed rate for the use of the uh, information capture, analyzing all the, 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 the consumers, okay? Each consumer is analyzed and we charge a fixed rate. These are our growth uh, rates. We are supposed to be selling in Spain in 2021. We are still in process of developing technology. By 2021, we are expected sales of 70,000 euros, but we are going to go on with Portugal in the next year, Germany in the following year, and end up in the UK in year 2024 with 4.2 million sales. Our team is composed of uh, very experienced personnel, multidisciplinary 
personnel with a specific um, um, with, with a specific studies and experience in ICT, in big data, in uh, data analysis, etc. I myself am dedicated to uh, innovation uh, projects and management. So figure that in any case, uh, all companies, utility companies, have to change, have to digi digitalize their information and use it to provide a better service to their clients. Thank you very much. Next. Yaro? Gracias. ¿Qué tal, Nacho? Empiezo. Eh, oh, sorry. Eh, good morning, everyone. And my name is Tiago Lemos. I'm the, the founder of uh, UPO Running Apparel. And first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Say Asturias for, for having the possibility to be here and present our project. Uh, I would like to uh, imagine, uh, if, you would like to, if you were to imagine a, a denim jacket, what it would be? A denim jacket would look like this. But back in 1984, uh, a different brand who was breaking the rules of the market thought that the denim jacket could also look like this. And that is uh, how Desigual, which is a very famous brand, was built. It was built by being different. So now, if we are to imagine a sports brand, a running brand, technical, technical clothing, for the moment, you would imagine something like this. Everyone running with the same shirt, with the same basic shirt, fluorescent shirt, or something like this, or something like this. So at UPO Running Apparel, what we just thought is that why, sh could, why shouldn't, we break, shouldn't we break the basic of all market and start putting the people running like this? And this is how it started, to build a, a technical running brand with completely different designs. It started back in 2016. Our, low, our motto, our claim is running never looks so good because we believe that you don't have to go yellow, pink, or blue while you're running. You can go with different clothing. And there is, we believe that there is a marketing, uh, market opportunity for this because there are more or less 80 million people running uh, every week in Europe and around 10% of these runners, they spend 300 euros per year in, uh, in clothing and shoes. 40% of all articles are considered from the running universe and more or less the, the total market in Spain is 300 million euros. So what, what, what are our pillars, our basic pillars of the brand? The first one is design. Every, uh, every uh, product of ours is designed by, by professionals. The second one is quality. Uh, we have some uh, uh, specific uh, um, uh, issues in, in each of the product that, that we bring, like the flat lock stitch or like the dry clean fabric, which is very different fabric from, from the, the usual running fabrics. And uh, the, the last but not the least, the made in Europe uh, pillar, which means that everything we produce is produced here. The, the shirts are produced in, uh, in Portugal, the socks are produced in, uh, in Burgos, and, uh, and the, 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 the jerseys are, are produced in Castellón, for, for example. But we have other factories that are working with us. What do we have? Shirts, which, has, which is our star product, where, which was our first product in 2016. Now we also have the socks, the socks that go along with the shirts, and also the tubulars. And right now we are developing shorts, we're developing jackets, we are developing new products in order to keep innovating in the, in the, in the market. Which is our, our wh what do you consider our target consumer? It's mainly what we call the Insta runner, the runner that wants to post his uh, selfies while running in the, in the, 
in the in the park. So where are we selling right now? We have we are a multi multi channel uh, brand. We sell through our web. Uh, we sell through third party online stores, also in marketplaces. Uh, actually, this week we have we have started to sell in in Carrefour, and next to in in. Uh, already this month, we are selling in El Corte Inglés as well, and our top market is mar is uh, is Amazon, where we are selling for one year now. And uh, also sell in fairs and exhibitions, and and some retail stores through our distribu distributor. Uh, what are the competition? Of course, you know all these brands, from uh, from uh, fashion brands to uh, specialized running brands like like Brooks, uh, and our our sales are. Uh, growing, fortunately, this year we hope to achieve 1,000 euros, uh, uh, 100,000 euros sales, and we started 2016 with 6,000 euros uh, of, of sales, and mainly the sales are uh, are uh, right now in Amazon through Amazon and our online store, and more or less around 25%, 75% uh, in Spain, 25% outside Spain. The team is composed of four uh, uh, partners, uh, myself, uh, Victoria, Bernardo, and, uh, and Daniel. Uh, we are both, yeah, both myself and Victoria, we are based in Asturias, Bernardo is in Lisbon, and, uh, and Daniel is here in Madrid. So we need some hydration, uh, we need to, to keep running, we need to, to still be on top of the race, so uh, I, would like you, I would like to ask you, if, are you in? this race uh, with us many thanks and lastly if you want if you want to buy a product you can go to our web and there is a coupon available if you put the word amigos you have a 30 percent discount in our web many thanks Okay, uh, good morning. Thank you everyone for being here. I am the operations manager of human analytics. Uh, we want to be the reference of developing pro productive solutions for the society. Okay? Uh, and we want to present you the trip that we did before coming here and get the platform of Spora. We were no uh, knocking to the doors of hospital and uh, health sector, and anyone open the door and say to us that, okay, take your data and process the data and give us predicted model. And suddenly, our, our team see their devices and said, okay, we have the data here. And we knew that there was a problem in the sports sector. And that problem is that there are a lot of data between the three main actors of the sports. And with the SPOTA, we put it all together as a ERP and all the data that comes from the devices like this, we proceeded and we made individual par uh, patterns. We connect the devices, we connect all the people in the same platform. Okay, and then Espola is a multi-device platform, transport data into knowledge, health, to plan and control the professional that is inside of the platform, we create a universe on a sports. It's a performance tool and we build individual patterns. Nowadays, there are more than 1,800 people using the platform. The first year, we build uh, 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 11,000 euros 
and this year we want to end with 75,000 and the next year we want to multiply this figure five times. Nowadays we are with Spanish federations, with institutions, sporting institutions, with particular people and you can say that this uh, product is a B2B platform but wants to be a B2B to see a business model. Of course, we know our competitors. We have identified them, but we know where, where we are and where we want to be. This is the team. In this, uh, there are two engineers, two doctors, and two economists. And resuming this speech, uh, we transport the data, we centralize all the data in one platform, and we connect the main three actors of uh, sports. And we want to connect and to do the, this in the health sector. Thank you very much. Hello? Okay, good morning. My name's Phil. I'm a founder and CEO at Meteor Byte Studios, and we're currently making Project Atra. And Project Atra is a video game. But stay with me. Don't leave yet. Don't use this as a toilet break. People outside, come in, come on, there are seats here. Why you should invest in video games? Why? I mean, it's 2.5 times as large as music and films combined. You know all those, those films your neighbor's kid is going every day? And all the music you, you listen to everywhere, all the music in all of history, Queen, Kanye West, everyone, it's 2.5 times as large as all of that combined. It's just below the ground, but it's huge, okay? And the oldest one third of the population is not a consumer yet. I play video games, I'm 31 years old. People who are 60 don't play video games, I will play them when I'm 60. So it keeps growing. It's not a bubble, it's a healthy, linear growth done by demographics alone. So who are we? We started in 2016. We're a business first studio. We have two people dedicated to business and marketing stuff. We're not just you know artsy people, we're engineers, we're a team of serious professionals. Uh, we've already published one game and the, to the market, and we've received proceed investment from, from Korean investors. That's South Korean investors, don't worry, okay? Um, and Project Atra is a, it's a game about surviving with a tribe. It's really simple concept, hard to master. Uh, we're gonna spend two years before the launch of the game, which is still far ahead, I admit, uh, just doing marketing in-house with our own resources, building up a huge community to try to bring this to the market in the best shape possible. We're resistant to market shifts. We use, a, uh, we use incremental prototyping and we use a lot of modern engineer techniques to make sure that we can monetize this game whatever in whatever way is the best for the moment when we release. Because right now the market is changing and we acknowledge those changes and we have to, you know, we have to be attentive to them, right? We have a legendary music composer on board. Does anyone know Harry Potter here? I do. Harry Potter, anyone? Okay. The guy that makes sounds uh, and sound effects for the Harry Potter games, he is with us right now. Okay, so he, he fell in love with the project, uh, downgraded his quote, uh, he wants to work with us. And the game is really easy to understand, really easy concept, it's niche, but it can jump into the mainstream and, you know, boom, like Minecraft, like Fortnite, like all those games that your neighbor's son plays, right? So the numbers, the cool part, okay, how can this work out for you? Um, you can, it has several exit strategies. You can be acquired by a bigger studio and be converted to a local delegation. This is usually $30 million worth. Um, yeah, that's a conservative estimate. Uh, many times it's 40 to 50 million. And you can go IPO just like everyone else. And this is like hundreds of millions. It's more rare, but it's, it, it happens. Uh, we had like two IPOs just this year, so it's, it happens. And the project cost is 0.3 million, okay? 0.3 million, 30 million on acquisition. If we make this work, right? Uh, and we can do this with equity, rev share, or both. That, that's fine on us. 
Um, so that's it for me. Uh, if anyone wants cards, I got them. If not, you can go to the stand number 60. It's easy to remember. It's 60. It's the age at which you will retire if you invest in Meteor Studios. Thank you very much.